Hi everyone, I've got a nice little soap recipe to share with you today. If any of you have already seen it, um, just earlier this morning I recorded a video to give you a bit of an update on how I have been formulating my soap recipes lately and I did it on the whiteboard. This video is part two where I show you how I'm actually making that soap. It's, um, it's a lovely recipe, I'm just calling it flower soap mainly because I've been making it in these molds and the recipe is perfectly designed to fit three of these flour molds so it makes 18 bars. I just bought these for cheap off eBay, you know, you can buy them around, you just need three of these of these molds. This recipe is just a recipe that I came up with a few months ago and I made a small batch and my mum and I really really liked it. We probably liked it more for the essential oil blend than anything else but it's a nice well balanced recipe as it is and um, I thought I'd share it with you. So it's just the flour soap. It's got um, olive oil, bit of palm oil, canola. I still need to do my video about palm oil too and I will be getting to that. There's a lot to say on that topic. A um, bit of canola, castor, coconut and shea butter and all of the details of the recipe I shared in the formulating video so go and check that out. I will put a link to that below and um, yeah let's make this soap and hopefully it turns out as good as the last batch did. <laughs> so first things first I'm going to weigh out my oils. I'm going to start off with the solids because I find they're a bit harder to retrieve if you make a mistake. So put them in first. Shea butter I'm starting with, 117 grams. Next I'm going to put in the palm oil because it's a bit solid as well, 351 grams. I'm not going to melt this, I'm just going to dig it all the way down to the bottom. I know the use of palm oil is quite controversial in soap making but um, I am going to do a video on that. Probably be my next soap recipe video or soap video. I think it's really important to have a good proper discussion about that. <laughs> I just haven't got to it yet but it's on the agenda. Don't you worry. 291 51. This is actually palm oil that I've had for a really long time. I'm just trying to use it up. I don't know yet if I'm going to buy more. I may do. I'm going to talk about that in the video. <laughs> now I'm going to add my more liquid oils. My coconut oil is in between at the moment. We're just in between seasons. It's getting cooler but it's not quite solid yet. So I want 117 grams of coconut. I'm just going to spoon this in bit by bit. Next I'll add the castor. Uh, it's 58, 58 grams I think. And the canola, 292 grams. Perfect. If you saw the formulation video for this recipe with the whiteboard you would have heard all about the citric acid that I put in this recipe and part of the reason for that is that I'm using this old canola oil um, and the citric acid will help prevent spoilage in this soap given that I'm using the, the canola oil. And last but not least the olive oil and I'm using some nice Australian extra virgin olive oil here. We need 234 grams, 235, oh well, one gram extra of olive oil is not going to hurt. Now that I've got all of my fats and liquid oils, I'm going to put the whole lot of this in the microwave on very on low power. That's a bit um, contentious too, you don't have to use a microwave, it's just what I do. Um, you can also melt these on the stovetop in very low heat if you want. I just find that the microwave is really convenient. But you do have to watch it, don't overheat it and use low power and just watch it and stir it as you go. Next I weigh out my essential oils and these are the absolute star of this recipe. 
This combination of lavender, palmarosa and patchouli. Mm, if you love those essential oils, try this combination. It is a winner. 16 grams of lavender. Oops, I got 17 grams. Oh well. I will put in 15 grams of palmarosa instead of 16. So it's meant to be 16 grams each of palmarosa and lavender. This is the palmarosa. There we go, 15 grams of that and eight grams of patchouli. There we go. Roughly eight grams of patchouli, it's so thick. I love it. And there's my essential oils ready to go. I'll just give them a mix up. Now I can hear that all the birds screeching outside, but I'm gonna open my window. Get a bit of fresh air to make this lye solution. I'm gonna put my goggles on now over my glasses to weigh out the sodium hydroxide. And I'm also gonna weigh out the citric acid. I will also put my gloves on. Okay, for this recipe, because I'm using the citric acid, the sodium hydroxide has been adjusted for that which you'll see in the part one formulating video. And so the corrected amount is, oh, here comes the sun again. That's nice. We need 163 grams. Okay, get your lid, put your lid on your sodium hydroxide straight away. It's quite humid where I am, so you do not want to leave that uncovered or it will go clumpy. And citric acid. Actually, I decided to go back to my little scale for the citric acid, just so that I can weigh it a bit more accurately. So we want 11.7 grams. Eleven point seven two. That's oh, eleven point seven four. That's okay. That's near enough for this purpose. As as exact as we want to try and make things with soap making, none of it's completely exact because there's so much variation with the oils that we use. Um, the saponification values in the soap calculators they're just averages. So we try and be as precise as, as we can, but it's, it's never 100% precise, which is why sometimes res recipes behave differently for different people. Um, but try and be as accurate as you can. Just checking on my oils. Um, just be really careful with the microwave. As I said, just go slowly, check, stir. The residual heat will keep melting things, so you don't wanna overheat them. You want these oils to all be at about, around about body temperature or a little bit higher, so roughly around 40 degrees Celsius is about, about perfect. A little bit higher is okay. If you're using the microwave, to go slow, same as the stovetop, because otherwise you'll have to wait for them to cool off, which is annoying. <laughs> yeah, 40, 42, 43, that's great. So I'm just gonna leave that now. That doesn't need to be heated anymore. Those residual bits of hot shea butter, uh, solid shea butter, they will melt because I'm going to mix this lye solution fresh and it's going to be fairly hot and the, the heat from the hot lye solution will transfer into the oils and it will melt those remaining um, fats, bits of butter. That's the heat transfer method, which is really cool to use. Gosh, all the trucks are going past today. Ours is a quiet street but it's not quiet today. That'd be right, just when I'm wanting to make a video. Never mind. All right. For the color for this soap, I'm just going to blend in a little bit of madder root powder. It just gives a really nice kind of earthy, pinky, reddy color. And I like just, rather than infusing it, I like just blending the powder straight into my, um, my oils or my soap batter. It, I love the texture of the tiny little dots of color that you get, um, but that's just my preference. This is stuff I bought from Aussie Soap Supplies years ago, but I've still got it and it's nice.
I'm also going to get my molds ready so that I'm not having a last minute rush. I like to put them on boards so that they're easy to pick up and move. I just need one more. So that's them all ready. Put them aside. Okay, I think I've got everything ready. I can now make the lye solution and mix the soap. For the water for this recipe, I'm just using some chilled rainwater that's filtered from my, my rainwater tank in the, in the garden. It's a really nice soft water, so it's really good for soap making. Distilled water is hard to get in Australia and I'd rather not buy bottled water if I don't need it. So I'm just using my rainwater. And I need 280 grams. 281, that's all right. Time to make the soap. First things first, citric acid. I dissolve in the water. Um, you need your citric acid if you're using it. Um, and just refer to the formulation video if you're not sure about anything that I'm talking about. And also if you're new to soap making, make sure you really understand what you're doing first before you try any soap recipe. I've got a safety essentials video that's really important that uh, people watch and understand. But dissolving the citric acid first in the water is probably the easiest way to use it. And then once that's dissolved, the sodium hydroxide goes in on top of that, but never the other way around. You always, always, always put your sodium hydroxide into your water. Never pour water into sodium hydroxide. It'll fizz and it's caustic and it's dangerous. And I've still got my goggles on too. Goggles always, always when you're making soap. Protect your eyes because you can't get your sight back if you lose it through splashing yourself with sodium hydroxide solution. All right, there's the citric acid all dissolved. So this is the sodium hydroxide going in slowly. Just pour a bit in at a time. Be very careful and sure-handed. Is that a word? Sure-handed, like sure-footed? I don't know. You just want to be really careful, not have any distractions when you're making soap. I'm standing well clear of any fumes. It does get a lot hotter when you're using citric acid, so be aware of that. You can use ice cubes for some of your water solution as well, and that helps reduce um, fumes coming off the lye solution. Once your lye solution is mixed, rinse these out straight away. Well, this is a sad day. I think my stick blender has finally had it. Listen to this. It sounds like a seagull. Oh dear. Oh, my poor old trusty blender. I've been using this stick blender to make soap since 2014, so nine years, and I've made a lot of soap. Oh well. Lucky, I actually bought a spare one just the other day, so I'm going to get it. Here's my new one. It's very much the same as the old one, except it's only in one piece. I like a stick blender. I like the cheap ones with the plastic on the bottom because they don't scratch your crock pots or anything. For the Aussies here, I bought this one at Kmart for $13. Pretty cheap, but my last one was an El Cheapo I bought for $10 too, and it lasted me nine years, so that's pretty good. I'm going to put in about half a teaspoon, tiny bit more of the matter root powder. See that shea butter's nearly all melted now. The maiden voyage of the new stick blender. That sounds better. I'm adding more matter root. Definitely needs a teaspoon, I think. That's probably enough. I want it to be a fairly subtle pinky color. I don't want it to be too dark. Yeah, that'll do. If I had that matter root powder as an infusion, I'd probably add it in later, but because it was in the powder form, I wanted to really blend it 
thoroughly into the oil so I'm adding it first before I add the lye solution or anything else. So I've got plenty of time to look at it and think about it and decide if I've got enough. I think that should be enough. As this soap saponifies, it actually draws out more of the color out of the ground matter powder. Now I'm just gonna add a tiny bit more. So it's about one and a third teaspoons. Yeah, I think that'll be good. Let's make this soap. Lye solution going in, just very carefully. It's quite hot. Just gonna blend this to a, an emulsion. There we go, that's a light trace. That's all I want. Quickly put the essential oils in. I've got my whisk here. And get my molds ready. This is gonna be fast. Ooh, it's thickening. It thickened on me last time too. So you gotta be really quick with this recipe. Keep stirring it as you pour it, that will keep it a bit more fluid. And don't dally. Wow. Maybe my lye solution was too hot. Quite possibly. That's one. Ooh, this might be too thick. Oh no. This recipe might be better for a, um, a loaf mold or I need to let my lye solution cool off a bit more. But that's all right. This is all learning. Urgh. I think I've overfilled them a bit too. So I may <laughs> run out of batter for this last one. That's all right, I'll just fill these as best as I can and then we'll leave it. Seems like all, a lot of my videos is um, showing all the mistakes, but that's okay. That's how we learn. Okay, that'll do. Ugh. All right, so I made a boo-boo. I overfilled these molds and now I'm short. If you're doing that with this recipe, and that, that's something, it's just worth pointing out that when your batter is thick, it's easier to overfill the mold. This kind of did happen to me last time too, but it was a while ago, so I've forgotten. So if you're gonna make this recipe, I would suggest letting your lye solution cool down. I'm gonna spray the tops of these with some alcohol. They look kind of brown at the moment, but they will become a nicer color once they're saponified. And this alcohol is just to prevent them getting soda ash. I think I'll definitely make this in a loaf, a loaf mold next time. Once they set up a bit, I'm gonna put them into my cooler so that they can stay nice and warm. And despite the overfilling issue and the thickening, they're gonna be beautiful soap that my family and friends are going to love. So we'll, we'll come back when I unmold them. Hey folks, well, I'm back. It's nearly 24 hours later. I ended up putting my soap in the oven because I made three batches yesterday. Two of them were the same recipe and this was a little test batch of a Castile soap that I'm trying out. Um, and I didn't have enough room in my cooler. I really wanted to insulate these just a little bit to make them gel. So I turned my oven on. My tri trick for doing this, and I actually do this with my bread making as well, is I turn my oven on for one minute and then turn it off completely. This oven, the light doesn't stay on. You can't independent, independently turn the light on. So if you've got an oven with the light that you can leave on with the door shut, you can just put the light on. But for my oven, I don't have that option. So I just turn it on for a minute, then turn it off, shut the door completely off. But that minute of heating really just uh, warms up the environment. 
So these are the finished soaps. I'm not sure if I got a full gel. Um, the color, you can't really tell here and they're still fresh. So they, I'll, we'll bring them up to the bench and we'll have a bit of a look. Um, I wanna show you the other two batches I made too because the other batch I made with this recipe, I made it using a bit of a different process and it didn't thicken up so drastically on me. So I'll tell you what I did there. Here we go. And these are the ones in my cooler. This is the other batch I made with the exact same recipe, completely smooth and gorgeous. Oh gosh, I don't think I was thinking too well yesterday. But anyway, just to show you that recipe does really work. I've got three of these. These are the new Kmart um, molds that I tested out. They turned out awesome. I can't wait to unmold these. I'll bring these all into the kitchen and we'll unmold the whole lot. Okay, these are all the soaps that I made yesterday. These round flower ones, these are the ones I showed you. These are the rose geranium ones that I made for my friend Alison that I made straight after with exactly the same recipe, different essential oils. Um, but I didn't stick blend this one so much. I just um, blended it just to an emulsion. So just until there was a bit of a color change and I knew that um, there wasn't gonna be any major separation. And then from there, I just continued with a whisk. I still had pretty hot lye water, um, but I just, I stick blended this one way too long, which is why it thickened up on me, which was a bit annoying, especially for a video. But you know, what can you do? That's life. So if you've got a fast moving recipe, definitely if you can be patient, which I'm terrible at being, um, wait for your lye solution to cool down before you add it to your mix. But if you want to go for the, the warmer version, just minimal, minimal stick blending and then use a whisk from there on. And this, this soap here was scented with rose geranium and rosewood, which is notoriously fast for tracing. And I managed to get nearly all of them in the mold before it thickened. You can see this was the last one I poured. It, it started to get really thick. So, you know, it's a good recipe. You just have to do it the right way. And um, I think I had a bit of brain fog yesterday. <laughs> Never mind. This is the this is a Castile soap recipe that I also tried out yesterday. So I'll unmold all of these. Let's see how these came out. So with the matter root powder, it's a pale pink with little dark spots of darker pink, which I don't know, might not be to everybody's taste, but I quite like it. I like the little pops of pink and it just gives the soap a bit of a texture without having to do swirls or anything. So if you're into really simple soap making techniques, just adding some botanicals or colorants that give it a bit of texture works well. And of course, with all soap recipes, these will need to cure for six weeks before I, they are used. And I will also just test the pH. I'm pretty sure these are already saponified, so they should be fairly safe already, which is why I'm handling them without gloves. I haven't actually tested them yet, but I know that they'll be pretty close. They're kind of pretty rustic looking, these ones, aren't they? There they are. I think mum should be happy with those. I hope she wasn't expecting plain white like last time. <laughs> She's usually pretty happy with whatever I give her. <laughs> I'll have to send her a photo, tell her I made them different. Anyway, they're good. And I may as well show you these while I'm here too. These are still a little bit soft. I'm gonna leave the rest of that rose geranium batch just to firm up for another day before I unmold them. This is a Castile soap recipe. You'll see more of this soap, hopefully, in a future video. I won't tell you all about it now, but it's something I'm experimenting with. Castile soap, even though it can be quite gooey and soft in the shower, it is a rock hard soap when it's first made, 100% olive oil. This is zero super fat Castile soap. And I know that it can come out of the mold straight away today. There we go. That is so much harder than that one. I love Castile soap. I wish it wasn't so slimy in the shower, but it's the most beautiful soap to use. Well, there we have it, everyone. That's the video all done. Thanks for watching 
all the way to the end if you made it. If you want the full recipe of this, I'll put a link to the video where I showed how I formulated this. That's the one with the whiteboard. You'll see the whole recipe written out there in every tiny little detail <laughs> and I'll talk through it all as well. Let me know if there's anything you have questions about or anything else you want to see or let me know. Get in touch. Um, you can contact me through my webpage or just leave a comment here under the video. Whatever you'd like to do is fine by me. Thank you everyone. Thanks for your support. I'll see you again soon. Bye.